our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the third Monday in the Easter season, and we remember today St. Melitus of Canterbury. St. Melitus was appointed the Bishop of Canterbury in 619, and he served until his death on the 24th of April in 624. He was of noble birth, and Pope Gregory I called him an abbot. He was also the Archbishop of Canterbury after the death of Lawrence in 619. And the Venerable Bede praised Melita's sane mind, but other than a miracle, little happened during his time as Archbishop. He suffered from gout. So, St. Melitus, we, for your faithfulness and willingness to serve as Archbishop and keeping the faith alive in the British Isles, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidier on page 66 if you're following along. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say, one Our Father and one Hail Mary. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My eyes are ever upon the Lord, who frees my feet from the snare. Alleluia. Look upon me, have pity on me, for I am alone and afflicted. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, you accompanied your sorrowing disciples as they journeyed to Emmaus. Go with us on our journey through this world. Guide us, uphold us, and make our hearts burn within us. May we walk in the strength of your presence all of our days. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Sicilia and Asia, 
came forward and debated with Stephen. But they could not withstand his wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, this man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarean will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd remained across the sea and saw there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen. I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father... God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Our first reading today from Acts, we continue the saga of the early church. And here we have Stephen. And he was preaching Jesus to the people. And he would take all comers who tried to debate him and just give them stone cold truth. And they they couldn't prove him wrong because he had the truth in him from the Holy Spirit. So then they took to lies. And isn't that what people do when they're losing, when they're failing? They then start to lie. Now we know that truth comes from God through his son Jesus and distributed to us now by the Holy Spirit. Lies come from the father of lies, Satan, Lucifer, whoever you want to call him, the same person, the father of lies. So they're speaking against Stephen. 
And he's just there in the court. And they said his face was like the face of an angel. Indeed, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. We can be too if we ask for the Spirit to come into us. Before every Mass, I pray that the Holy Spirit may guide me, bring the truth to you, and that I may celebrate Mass in the way that Christ intends me to. I give myself over, and that's what we all need to do, brothers and sisters. And just as we have in the Gospel, there People had just been fed, the 5,000 men, not let alone the women and children. And they're looking for Jesus. And he, he knows what's in people's hearts. He knows what's in our heart. And he says, you're coming looking for me because of the food. But do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. He's talking about his body his blood, the sacrament of the Eucharist that he left us. And to accomplish the works of God, to accomplish the works of God, he says that you believe in the one he sent. What do you mean by that? What is belief, really? Is it just an intellectual assent to the fact that Christ was here on earth, that he died? rose again? Or is it a true and abiding belief that he is God's son sent to save us from our own selves and sin, defeat Satan, and yes, help others to come to him? That should be a belief that it becomes a Part of our very nature. We believe in the one he sent, God sent, his son, Jesus. To be truly believe, we need to know with the level of knowledge that we can have and to believe that so strongly that we go out and bring others to him. How do we do that? ask the Holy Spirit to come into us, to help us to have the zeal, the zeal for it. Sometimes it's as easy as sharing this Mass on, on your social media or sending a text to someone with the YouTube link. Sometimes it's as easy as just making a donation to help us continue our ministry here. Sometimes it's Telling our friends and family about Jesus and how living the way Christ taught will not only make us happier here and give us more freedom here, but will bring us to eternal life with him. If only we believe with the full ascent of our being. So my brothers and sisters, maybe it would be worthwhile to take some time today <coughs> to see how we, to reflect on how we can more fully bring Jesus to those around us and deepen our faith, our belief in the one that God sent for us. Just like Stephen did, we heard about in Acts. He even took persecution. We'll hear about tomorrow to the highest level. And he took it martyr for the faith. Are you willing to be a martyr? In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. With humble hearts, let us bring our needs to the Father, confident of his loving care for us. Our response is Alleluia. For all the faithful, that we might be assigned to those we encounter of the living Christ and his sacrificial love for us. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For all world leaders, that they may turn to the Holy Spirit for guidance as they work to foster peace and unity. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For a greater reverence and deeper belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For all the sick and their caregivers, especially those in our parish prayer list, that they may trust the Lord as their refuge and strength. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For our own needs and intentions, we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. And for all of those who are gripped by Satan, that the Holy Spirit may touch them and turn their hearts back to our Lord, which is our Mass intention today. We pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. For all of our beloved dead and those who will die today, that God may give eternal rest and joy to all whom he has called from this life. We pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Loving Father, our hearts are burning within us, for we have heard your word. Prepare us now to offer this sacrifice and receive the bread of life. May us all these things. Things both spoken and unspoken through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. If, if, you, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice. We have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good, for the benefit of his holy church. God, our Father, you instilled a vibrant hope in us through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. Through the gifts of this altar, may we, being raised with him, seek those things which are above and be made partakers of eternal life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic prayer 2, which is found on page 82 if you're following along. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you are well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your Son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, make a covenant and to manifest his resurrection, he took bread. He gave you thanks and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together calling then his death and resurrection to mind. We offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? the bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord, Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Let's say together the sec second communion prayer on page 98 if you're following along. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you, my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you, unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Flame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you made yourself known to your disciples in the breaking of the bread at Emmaus. May we, through the same blessed sacrament, come to know you and abide with you forever, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, for the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light, and where there's sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. I pray that you can join us on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Saturday at 5 p.m., and Sunday for the fourth Sunday in Easter, also Good Shepherd Sunday at 9 a.m. We pray that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace. Fight evil wherever you find it and spread joy wherever you go.
Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss, alleluia. 